Hey everyone, it's Andrew. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a video showing you how to glue a puzzle together once you have it complete so that you can either frame or mount it on a wall. I recently finished two separate puzzles in my kitchen area. One's a 2,000 piece Star Wars themed puzzle and then the other one's a 1,000 piece Pokemon puzzle. Yeah, they're dorky and nerdy, but I was doing them for a couple weeks and I have them complete. And rather than putting them in the boxes, I decided I was just going to glue these together and mount them on the wall just because I don't anticipate ever doing these puzzles again. And so what we'll do in this video is I'll walk through the steps as far as how to glue these together so that if you want to display them on the wall, you can go ahead and do it. Okay, so before we start, we'll walk through everything you need in order to glue and mount the puzzle. Um, so first off, you will need the puzzle. It should be complete, but if you're still in the process of finishing it, just go ahead and finish it. Um, so this is the Star Wars themed puzzle I was talking about. This was 2,000 pieces and it encompassed basically the Death Star um, kind of like scene with a wide variety of different um, scenes from the different movies in the background. Um, so there's like Boba Fett, there's C-3PO, R2-D2, there's um, Leia being captured when she's a prisoner, there's Darth Maul kind of falling in the pit when he dies. Um, so there's a lot of different scenes in here that are small that any Star Wars fan would probably appreciate. So it was really fun to put together, um, but it was a pain because being 2,000 pieces, it basically encompassed my entire kitchen island and I had to spread the pieces all over the place. But that's the Star Wars one. We'll be mounting that today. The other one is going to be this Pokemon themed one. So it basically has Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and Charmander as the first three uh, Pokemon that you can choose from the actual game. And I made it, I finished this about a a couple weeks ago. Um, so those are the two puzzles. You're obviously, you'll need the puzzle. Um, next up, you'll need some sort of adhesive or glue in order to glue the puzzle. So in this instance, I'm gonna be using Mod Podge Matte Finish Glue. Um, they make this in a matte version as well as a gloss version. Um, I decided to pick the matte version just because I didn't want a glossy finish to the, my puzzles. Um, but you can pick either based on your preference. Uh, Mod Podge also has a puzzle glue as well. So if you see that in the store, or you can always pick that as well. But so you'll need some sort of adhe adhesive or glue. The Mod Podge is what I'm gonna be using in this instance. Um, then you'll need something to apply the glue. So I'm just using a classic like foam brush. You can get this for about 25 cents to a dollar in any craft store. Um, you'll need a cup or a bowl to pour the glue into in order to apply it. And then um, this, th this varies based on your personal preference, but you can either um, just glue the, glue the puzzle directly over like wax paper Paper or something else, um, or you can basically mount it onto um, a foam board. Um, so my plan is I'm actually gonna glue the puzzle over the foam board and then basically glue the puzzle to the foam board later on um, in order to, so that it's sturdy. And then I'll decide on framing it later on if I feel like it. Um, but these are basically your classic project foam boards. I ended up picking, two, picking up two for this larger puzzle um, that we'll actually have to um, tape together because the size of the puzzle is too large. So there will be two side by side in order to do the Star Wars themed one. And then the other one um, should be mountable to just one of these boards. Um, so that's everything you'll need. Otherwise, we'll just get started and we'll go through this step by step. Okay, so for step one for the Star Wars themed puzzle, what I'm gonna do is actually tape two separate foam boards together. This is I'm gonna be using as the backing. And because of the size of this puzzle, you can't use like one of these foam boards alone. Um, so definitely measure the dimensions of your actual puzzle so that you can guarantee that these foam boards will work. Um, these foam boards, I believe, are 20 by 30 inches. Um, so two of these double up and basically cover the entire surface area of the puzzle. As far as tape, I'm just using your classic like Packers tape. The really the reason why is you're just basically going to connect and get these foam boards kind of like aligned and that's going to serve the purpose of um, being a backing for the board. And so that's what you'll do for the first step if you need to based on the size of your puzzle. Okay, so I'm done with taping that. Basically, I, I taped it around the entire circumference of the foam boards um, so that it would be a little bit sturdy and would not fall apart. Really, you only have to do this if your puzzle is larger than like a thousand pieces. Otherwise, a thousand pieces should fit on this, but measure the dimensions. Um, 
Um, next, what you'll want to do is basically slide the puzzle onto the foam board. Um, you'll have to do this very carefully at the edges because there is a lip on the actual foam board. And so just be very careful with this and gentle, and then just slide it all the way underneath your puzzle um, without taking it apart entirely. And so there you go. And so that's it all the way slid on. And so these are two separate 20 by 30 inch um, boards and they cover the entire circumference of this puzzle. So this will work very well. Um, now what we'll do is we'll start gluing it. All right, so now the next step is you're gonna basically glue the entire puzzle. I'm gonna do two separate coats on the front and then I'll do two separate coats on the back providing that it doesn't actually stick to the foam board. If it does actually stick to the foam board, I'll just leave it as is and make sure that it is at heat. It adhered to it as well enough. Um, but what we'll do is we'll use the Mod Podge matte finish. We're gonna pour it into this bowl just to make it easier to access. I'm not entirely sure the quantity we'll need, but I'll just pour that much out for now. And then um, what you'll do is basically just glue this entire front of the puzzle and you're just gonna apply it in a superficial thin surface um, so that it basically gets into all the crevices but does not leave too much residue on the front of the puzzle because you do not want to have streaking or anything like that. And so for the sake of this video, I'm basically going to do this entire puzzle and I'll speed up this process now so you, can, you don't have to watch through it. Okay, so that's one entire coat for the first time. What we'll do now is we'll just let this sit dry completely. You don't want to over soak it with paint just because then it'll have excess streaking and you'll just see the, not the paint, but glue um, because you'll have excess glue and it'll just look bad. Um, as far as this foam brush, it actually broke. I've never had this happen before, so I don't know if I'd recommend it, but just pick up a couple ones of these so you'll have them. I have more to use in this instance, but we'll let this dry and then we'll do another coat after. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and the puzzle is completely dry as far as the Mod Podge. If you take a look at this, this puzzle was actually like a glossy finish when I first started. Uh, with the matte finish, it did actually remove the glossiness to it, so I kind of have like mixed feelings about it. Um, but what we'll, we'll do now is we'll apply a second coat of this. Um, it's virtually going to be the exact same thing again, um, applying one more coat and making sure that there's no streaking in the process. As for the video, I'm not going to show this on the camera just because I want to save some time. Alright, so it's been another 20 minutes. The puzzle is dry to the touch on the front. Um, so this is what it looks like after two coats. Um, so it's pretty much, there's no streaking or anything like that. It's this matte finish. It looks pretty good. Um, so now what we'll do is very carefully, uh, we're, because the front is actually glued, we're going to flip this entire thing over. And so now it's completely good in the front. And so now what we'll do is basically do the exact same thing on the back. Uh, as far as the back, you don't have to be as careful as far as streaks and stuff like that because the appearance doesn't matter. Um, so really you're just gonna soak in the whole back with the glue as well. And this is gonna be really the side that keeps everything in place. And so we'll do the exact same thing on the back with an additional two coats. Okay, so real quick, this is what it looks like on the back after using the glue on the back. Um, I basically soaked the entire back with this. Um, the backing is more of like a cardboard material so it does absorb more glue on this side as compared to the front so you will definitely need more glue. Um, as far as the Mod Podge, this small bo bottle is now completely empty um, so if you flip it over it's completely empty and I don't have any more glue so I'll have to pick up more but what I'll plan on doing is do one more coat after this um, and then uh, we'll basically start mounting it to the actual foam board after all right, so I let the puzzle sit so that the glue could dry entirely overnight and so it's completely dry at this point. Um, so far it's worked very well as far as keeping the puzzle together. And so as you can tell, if you flip it over and manipulate it, it's not coming apart whatsoever. Um, so at this point you have two options. One option is you could just try to mount this either in a frame or on the wall, depending on your preference. Um, what I'm gonna try to do is actually mount it to the foam board. And so the next step is we're gonna basically replicate the exact thing we just did um, where we pretty much 
uh, cover the entire backing, but then after covering it, what I'm gonna do is flip it so that it glues in directly onto the foam board. And then once it's glued to the foam board, we'll cut it out so the borders are even with the actual puzzle. So for, for the purposes of this part, I'm just gonna glue the entire back. Um, one thing I did wanna mention is that I did go and pick up two separate, two more bottles of the Mod Podge in this uh, eight ounce size because I did run out. Um, so what we'll do now is um, basically just cover the whole backing. I'll speed it up for the purposes of this part of the video. Um, and then I'll show you once uh, it's all glued, how I'll flip it over so that it glues onto the foam board. Okay, so now that the surface is entirely covered, what we'll do now is we'll just flip this over and adhere it to the actual foam board, being very careful in the process. And so we'll just slide it down like this, okay? And then you'll just make sure that for the purposes of this, the foam board is entirely covered and everything's aligned. My plan is I'll actually cut this out later on. And so now you'll just press down across the entire thing. And then what I'm probably gonna do is find something to apply weight to this so that the glue actually adheres to the foam board. And then very similarly to last night, what I'm gonna do is just let this sit entirely overnight so that it glues entirely and it dries prior to manipulating it further. All right, so while the other puzzle dries, I put it on the ground and put some weight on it. Um, we'll do the same exact thing with this other puzzle that I have. So as you can tell, this puzzle is about a thousand pieces and it's much smaller, so it's easier to manage and manipulate. Manipulate. Um, so here, as you can tell, the foam board actually aligns very well with the edges here. And so what we'll do is do the exact same process where we're gonna use the Mod Podge and we're basically gonna coat the entire front surface evenly and make sure that there's no streaks. And then um, we'll do two coats on the front and then we'll flip it over, do two coats on the back, and then I'll plan on gluing it directly to the foam board. Um, I won't necessarily show all this in the video for the purpose, for purposes of uh, saving time. However, um, I'll show you the end product at the end so that you can see what this looks like as well for this puzzle. All right, real quick, this is what the second puzzle looks like after one coat with the Mod Podge. Um, so there is a little bit of a streaking effect, but it is a matte finish. Um, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I'm gonna do a second coat, and then we'll basically put two coats on the back and mount it as very similar to the Star Wars. All right, and so this is what this puzzle looks like after two separate coats on the front. Um, actually, the streakiness is less noticeable after the second coat. Um, you can still look at it and see it if you um, kind of like shine the light, uh, but it does build in and blend pretty well with the puzzle. And so now what we'll do is we will flip this over um, and do two separate coats on the back. Right, so the back of the second puzzle is completely dry at this point. It worked really well. There was one area on the corner here where it actually got stuck when I first uh, glued it on the front side. So I glued that together and it's realigned at that point. Um, but otherwise this has worked very well as far as keeping this puzzle together. And so as you can tell, it's, it's it's held up really well. Um, so now what we'll do is basically do the exact same step as far as applying glue so that you can mount it to the foam board. Um, in this instance, you'll have to be a little bit more careful to align it so that it doesn't overlap um, simply because the edges don't have as much space. Um, as far as this part, I'm actually gonna be using clear um, Elmer's glue. I picked this up while I was at the store as well just because it was about like, I think like seven or eight bucks for this entire container, which is um, the same price as the Mod Podge. Um, so it's a little bit cheaper and hopefully this will work as, out as well, but I wanna try it out on the back of this just to see if it'll adhere for mounting. And so really what we'll do is virtually do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna pour out this Elmer's glue and then basically I'll spread it out evenly across the entire back and then we'll flip it over and then align it so that it's mounted onto the foam board. Okay, so the whole back is now glued and or has glue on it. So what we'll do now is we'll just grab the edges here very carefully and then we'll flip this over. And then what we'll do is we'll place it so that it's aligned so that the edges cover each end, all right? 
And so as you can tell, everything's aligned there. So now you'll just press it down and then I'm gonna put something on top of this so that it um, sets and it stays to the foam. Right, so in the meantime, while that puzzle is drying, we'll come back to the other puzzle. So this came out really well. Um, the foam board did stick to the puzzle with the uh, Mod Podge on the back. So it held up really well as far as sticking to it and staying firm. Um, so now what we'll do is basically use um, just kitchen scissors and we'll just basically cut out the foam board along the edges. And I'll just do this very carefully so that I don't actually cut the puzzle, but I get the foam board along perfectly. Okay, so that's it cut. Um, there's some areas where there's still some foam sticking out, so I'll just still like revise that, but that's basically what it'll come out as after you cut the foam board off the edges. All right, so here is the other puzzle after leaving it to dry overnight. As you can tell, the Elmer's glue worked effectively as far as holding the foam board together. Um, so it seems like a good cheaper or affordable option as far as connecting the actual puzzle to the foam board. Um, so that's an option rather than using the Mod Podge um, on the back as well. So that could save you some money from that standpoint. Um, now what we'll do is real quickly, we'll cut off the foam board edges um, so this is realigned appropriately. So that's cutting the board. So real quick, what I'll do is I'll show you both, pu both cut puzzles close up and give you a general sense of what they look like when they're mounted to the foam board. All right, so here is the Star Wars puzzle mounted um, on the actual board. Um, a couple things to note is that it came out really well as far as the surface and the texture. Uh, the matte finish was really nice because you can actually see um, the texture of the puzzle and notice that it is a puzzle rather than a poster. So I really appreciate that. Um, kind of feedback as far as things, the foam board did warp a little bit. Um, I think that's just because the size of the puzzle, um, when you glue it, it's gonna dry and warp it a little bit. So I could probably try to flatten this out by putting weight or flattening it. Um, I'll have to mess around with that. But this is what the Star Wars one thing it comes out uh, looking like. I'm really happy with the finish. Um, this was for Mod Podge for the, both the front and the back, which worked really well. Um, as far as the Pokemon puzzle or the second puzzle, um, this is what this one looks like. Um, so very similarly, it looks good on the front. Um, there is some streaking from the actual Mod Podge um, on the front where it does give some texture. And I, I think I saw on one edge over here, um, you might not be able to see it on camera, um, but some of the Elmer's glue ran over on the edge so there's some glossy finish there. I might have to mess with it as far as using like a little bit of a sandpaper or something like that to eliminate the glossiness. Um, but this worked really well. It did work slightly as well. Um, with the foam board, um, but it's something that I might be able to straighten out as well. Um, as far as mounting it actually onto the wall, I'll have to figure out what the best option is. Um, some options are you could just mount it directly um, using like, a, a, I guess like some sort of adhesive or something like that. The other option is framing it. I'm leaning more towards framing them just because um, with the warping, it'll straighten out in the frame um, and it'll give some edge and make it look more, a little bit more elegant. Um, the foam board does have some, the kind of like cut edge look to it. So it's not as clean as I would personally like. Um, so I think throwing this in a frame will be nicer. I personally don't have the frame yet, so I'll have to look into that. But hopefully this video is helpful. So this was a video showing you how to use Mod Podge as well as Elmer's glue um, for gluing your puzzles together after you use them. Um, I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, it's definitely something that I wouldn't have ever used these puzzles again. So it's something that you could post them on the, your wall if you want and kind of decorate based on that. Um, so if you have questions, comments, anything like that, please uh, post them below. Um, if people have comments as far as, or feedback regarding um, using the Mod Podge uh, gloss finish, you can always comment there to give helpful advice regarding that. And then if anybody's ever used the Elmer's glue on the front of the puzzle, uh, it'd be interesting to hear your perspective on that as well, just because I do have that and it's way cheaper than Mo the Mod Podge. Um, but I am concerned that it might have a glossy appearance that won't look good in the long run. So hopefully this video helped out. Um, thanks for watching. If you have comments, questions, post them below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you hit the like button, I'd appreciate that. And as always, if you're interested in following my channel, you can hit the subscribe button now.